Hello, happy Easter. Welcome one and all. I hope you all are having a fantastic weekend. And it is cause to celebrate. Jesus Christ is risen. Our sins have been washed. It's a great day. I hope you all are doing great. So we're going to talk about <clears throat> everything, but it is Easter Sunday. So for all you non-Christians, you probably aren't, you know, all that interested in this. And I get it. I'm not here to force anybody. But yes, this is the day that Jesus rose from the dead. And uh, we're going to celebrate that because it's a big deal. It's uh, a rebirth. We're new. We're cleansed. This is a, a very, very good thing. So, it's got the giggles. So, hello, Eve, Harry, Sunflower, Mustang Mama. <laughs> I hope you all can hear me all right. Harry Graves. Yes. Mustang Mama. Yes. Not be confused with Mustang Sally. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I'm so glad y'all are here. Hmm. So, yeah, I no longer smoke cigarettes, just the pipe. <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. I can't help it. I was watching this P. Diddy thing and Meek Mill just put a new rap out and it's hilarious. Mm. <laughs> Hey, Lady Lolo. Lady Lolo. <laughs> Giggly. Because <laughs> Meek Mill said, huh? <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea what she just said. <laughs> Lizzie, huh? Oh. <laughs> okay, Cher's going to show us why she's laughing so much. Oh, <laughs> This is rap now. You want to go to the mall? I'm like, oh. Uh, yeah, that sounds like rap nowadays to me. That's his first freestyle after everyone says his lips been on P. Diddy's, you know what? Okay. Okay, reset. We went from Jesus to rap. I don't know how the hell that happened. This stuff's a little damp, won't stay lit. Ah, so, um, yes, we are going to be talking about, well, rebirth, starting anew. I'm going to read uh, from the Bible in a little bit here. But uh, yeah, as far as rebirth, I mean, y'all know that I haven't been on YouTube much. I haven't been doing much. And it's because I've really lost my taste for true crime. Now, it's not because I don't want to help solve cases. You know, stuff like that. Find justice for the innocent. I do still care about that. But I, once a case has been like gone over a little bit and basically all the information that we're going to get has been gotten, then it just becomes this parade of negativity and just trashing people and like all this he said, she said, and look at how terrible this person is and look how awful that person is. And it's not even about the victim anymore. It's, it's just all lost. And at that point, I just can't, I can't be a part of it anymore. I just, I, it weighs too heavy on me. 
I can't be mean to people or mean about people and then go to bed calm. I just can't. It's just not, it's not in me to do it. I'm not judging, but I'm saying I just can't. I can't do that. I look like a distinguished professor with my pipe. Well, thank you. <laughs> and Lady Laura, it'll be New Testament. Obviously, like we're talking Easter and Jesus, so it will be New Testament. I have never, ever in my life, oh no, that's not true. Never, never in my adult life have I read something from the Bible aloud. So this is going to be difficult because, <laughs> you know, the way the Bible is written, it's not uh, common English. So I'll probably garble a little bit, but I'll do my best. Hello, Z hounds. Yes, the world does need more positivity and love. Absolutely. And that's what Easter is all about. It's all about positivity and love. I mean, can you imagine caring for mankind, for the world so much that you would give up your child, give yip, give up your child to be tortured, mutilated, and killed? I don't think there's any one of us who could possibly do that. I couldn't give up one of my cats. <laughs> Never mind a child. Thank you, April. Happy Easter. Oh, you're, you're Z unfiltered. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, good to see you again. So yeah, this is like, it's a huge thing. And it's, yeah. I I can't say that I love humanity enough to, to do that. Uh, no, it'd be the King James Version. We actually, Cher was given this, this beautiful Bible. Like, that is gorgeous. And it was a gift from Running Bear Gallagher. Now that, this is just, I mean, it's so, like, the... The leather is just so soft and you just, just touching it. I know it sounds kind of fanciful or whatever, but just touching it. It's like you can feel peace. Like it feels good to hold. <laughs> There's Matthias, king in the castle. Hey, king in the castle. I don't know if that's his butt or face. Oh, there you go. Face. <laughs> Sis! I see Z. Cotton candy boobs. Yeah, cotton candy got the same one. Yep. And they, they're like really nice. Yeah, I really like this Bible. Thank you to Running Bear. So before I get into uh, reading some of the passages, which I'll read them and then... <laughs> Thank you. And then if uh, any of you would like to hear certain passages, you just put them in the chat and I'll find them and I'll read them. But before we get into that, uh, I kind of touched on it, but I, I got off on a tangent, which happens a lot. Hey, baby kisses. Um, talking about rebirth and everything and my being on YouTube and all that. I'm not entirely sure I'm going to even try to stay in true crime. Lately, I've been, and Cher can even attest to this, I've been feeling very different. And I don't really know why, but I've been feeling like I need something more. And maybe it's because I'm so satiated with my romantic life now. <laughs> because I have a wife. I have children. I feel centered as a husband and a father. So that part of me is full. Yes, of course I do. <laughs> but now it feels like since... And for a lot of people, and maybe some of you out there, like... Uh, romantically or intimately, you are, you feel like there isn't enough of that in your life. Right. And maybe for me, that was really 
a big void that was causing other behaviors. I, I'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist. I couldn't tell you. But anyways, now that I have that, I'm feeling a yearning for something new. So I've been watching different videos on YouTube. I've been reading books. I've been searching and I keep coming back to religion and politics. It just, every time I watch a religious video or a political video, uh, it's, it like sparks something in me and I'm just far more interested and I feel far more passionate about that. So I may be changing the, the premise of my channel. I, I don't know. I'm still debating. I'm still thinking. I know for a while I actually did create a uh, woodworking channel. And I liked that idea, except I wasn't really comfortable with filming inside people's homes because I would have to get their permission and everything. And it just felt like that's not really appropriate to be asking people because a lot of people would say yes, because they'd feel put on the spot because I'm there to install their cabinets. So they'd feel like if they said no, it would piss me off and I wouldn't do a good job or something. So I, I got to scratch that idea. I just, I can't. So I'm thinking either things are going to kind of stay the way they are. Maybe I'll get bit by the true crime bug again. A case will really speak to me and I'll feel like I need to address certain things about cases. I'm sure I still will, but it won't be from... Well, it never was from a point of anger or like, look at how terrible this person is. This person should be like ripped apart in the street or whatever. I've never been like that. So it'll never be like that anyway, but it might come from more of a philosophical or a theological sort of point of view. But we'll see. I, I really don't know. I'm like I said. Lately, it's been like a good, a good three or four months. Things have been changing for me and not in a bad way at all. Like suddenly I'm just feeling like this thirst for knowledge and of certain things and curiosities. And I think that's, I think that's a positive thing. Could be my MS has, a lesion has touched a nerve in my brain. It's changing my personality it's very possible but i'm still me so i don't think so i think it's just just some kind of a yearning we all want to feel complete in life and now that i have one aspect of my life that i feel complete there's just something else that i want to feel complete in and yeah i will say that may, i may come across and I, i'm not I'm by no means dumb I would never call myself dumb, but I'm not, I wouldn't call myself highly intelligent. I'm reasonable. I'm logical. I wouldn't say I'm highly intelligent. And part of that is I don't have a lot of knowledge. I mean, I've just kind of coasted through life. Not really contemplating. I haven't, I haven't read books since I was in school, aside from maybe one or two, and I'm 47 years old. And in the last month I've read, uh, Moby Dick, Catcher in the Rye. I'm reading Pride and Prejudice. I'm reading, uh, history books, European history. I've probably read five or six books in the last couple of months. And I'm feeling, I'm, I'm feeling like a level of knowledge build inside me and it's making me feel better about my mental capacity, shall we say. But yeah, anyways, okay. So enough about me. This is about Jesus and to anybody else who's come in that I've missed, 
Um, Lacey Ann, hello. Mr. Garlic Man, <laughs> hello. Happy Easter, everybody. Eve, I haven't said hello to you. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hopefully, I haven't missed anybody. Outdoorsy Life, hello. Do some history in my area. Yeah. Uh, Canadian history is like, like if you search American history, it's everywhere because you have the Revolutionary War, you have the Civil War, and these were huge, and America was triumphant, and it's inspirational, and then the battle within itself, and that brought a whole new America, basically. So it's like almost, no, I'm not going to say almost biblical, but it is very uh, powerful, the journey. Whereas Canadians' journey, it's not, I mean, sure, it has its moments, but it's not, it's not the same. And it's actually hard to find, like just searching uh, Canadian history because I don't know if it's that we're so liberal or anything, but it's really hard to find. Like, okay, give me a chronological book that has the events from like when people first started to populate Canada, which was, uh, oh my God. This is wrong, but it's something like the Paleolithic Indians, like from India. Something like that. That's the wrong word, but it's something like that. Anyways, they were apparently the first people in Canada, the first human beings in Canada. And then it came from, you know, came from there. There are Vikings that's been documented that have come to Canada and then you know, Christopher Columbus come over to America and well, he left, but other people started coming over more and then things spread north and what have you. But yeah, I would definitely love to learn more about Canadian history. It's just hard to find it because it, it seems to only want to go back to the point where, uh, let's just say Caucasian people were horrible to the natives it doesn't seem to want to like talk about anything beyond that like i can find a hundred books on that and yeah it was horrible what those people did to the natives was absolutely disgusting no one's denying that but what happened before norwegians fleeing to canada yep yeah. There's a lot, a lot of um, refugee people fleeing persecution coming to Canada. A lot of that. But. That's one of the things that make, made Canada wonderful. Is because it is a land of, always has been a land of diversity always it's always been that but now Canada has become weak and just not the country that I want for my people that's for sure one of your ancestors walked the trail of tears on foot there you go Turtle Island. Weak as in law enforcement. Weak as in our morals. And that's pretty much everywhere in Western society now. Well, not even Western society, the whole world. We have lost our way morally as a people. Oof. Is the Bible considered historical? I would say so. Is everything in the Bible 100% accurate and factual? No, I wouldn't say that. I would definitely not say that. A lot of it is uh, 
stories and lessons and metaphors. Absolutely. But there is some fact in there. And there are things mentioned in the Bible that have been found by archaeologists. So it's not made up. Hello, Chan. <laughs> Morning Dove. What's That was the... Uh, the Native American Cherokee Indian, that's the one who walked the Trail of Tears. I like that. <gasps> she <laughs> hmm. Prairie Boy 77 True Crown Productions channel link. Well, I don't know if you're trying to put my channel link but if people are here they have it <laughs> i don't know if you're trying to put ask for someone else's channel link if i missed that hey northern farm girl jesus died easter eggs for your sins mr garlic man you chan that's terrible <laughs> i think even god would have a chuckle at that one though a play on words Oh, you just dear. tugged it out of my ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> His ponytail is glorious. It's getting pretty long. Nice. <laughs> Mally's story. You're bad for that. Miley's story. <laughs> Mally's story. <laughs> <laughs> naughty, naughty. Yeah, be naughty. Missed something, but all right. Okay. Uh, no, I'm almost full here. I have a slurp. That's your hair color now, ash blonde. This is natural. Apparently, it's highly sought after, like this silvery blonde color. But yeah, at some point, Sharon and I were talking about this, and I think it's a great idea. At some point, I'll let it get longer, but then I'm going to buzz it off and give it away to uh, oh, some place that takes hair for uh, people battling cancer. Mm -hmm. I mean, why not? Yeah, you've never colored your hair. Mm -mm. Well, not in the last 30 years. I think we should let it grow for the summer. Yeah. And then maybe come it. come fall or something because yeah. it'll it'll be probably almost a foot long chop the beard chop the hair <laughs> we'll be a new man <laughs> locks of love that's it thank you mr garlic man that's the one that but I, love it. Oh. I love it too looks like i don't know i'm tired of it catching in my zipper yeah and it might this be this is annoying <laughs> it's not in your zipper yeah all the time uh -huh. and it gets caught in my ring. Your husband is getting there too. Vitamin E sprouted your hair. 12 inches of non-split hair. There you go. Oh, and you've done research on locks of love and you don't recommend them. Okay. Well, we'll... A place like that anyway. It doesn't have to be that specific place, but I'll we'll donate to the same place Gypsy Rose did. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like why not? I mean it's just hair and it's not I don't need to have long hair to be happy. I've this is the longest my hair has probably been since I was a teenager. Matthias got the memo that I'm the animal torturer. <laughs> <laughs> To follow me has to be a minimum of 12 to 16 inches well yeah i mean if it was short it'd be kind of pointless right like they got to be able to make a wig out of it so yeah we'll we'll see what do you want? and if i gotta wait a little bit longer for it to grow a little longer that's My fine dad? oh, oh. <laughs> okay <laughs> king of the castle mm -hmm. he loves that 
He loves being on share shoulders and my shoulders. He does this to me when I'm on the toilet. You're going to donate your pubes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they're not 18 inches, man. Yeah. Yeesh. <laughs> I don't want to see a picture of you in shorts. That's I kind of do. <laughs> Your thing brought we up from the back. <laughs> I miss Shan. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, let's get into this uh, Bible reading. Oh, Lord Jesus. David. Happy Easter, brother. Happy Easter, David. Just in time. <laughs> so I'm going to be reading... Uh, from the book of John. And this is obviously after Jesus has been crucified. And, yeah, it is the... After he rises. So this is... Uh, John chapter 20. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark unto, unto the sepulcher, sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulchre. And he stooping down and looking in saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then come a Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre and seeth the linen clothes lie and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre and seeth two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. They say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she said, had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposing him to be the gardener, saying unto him, Sir, if it thou have borne him hence, tell me thou hast laid him. Tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren, and say to them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. When he said that, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then Jesus said to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them, 
and whoever sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas sees Jesus, but Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he has said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas was with them then. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Now that last bit with Thomas. Because the other disciples, when Mary went to them and said, I saw Jesus, he lives. They believed her. But Thomas needed proof. And that proof, that's that's a big thing nowadays. The proof that God exists. Proof that Jesus walked the earth. And that's... That's a big problem in the world today, and one that no, no man can solve. Now, I highly doubt there are any atheists watching this video at this point, but in case there are, I would like to say to you that I do not know that God exists. No one on this earth knows that God exists. But I will also say, you do not know that God doesn't exist. No one on this earth knows that God doesn't exist. That's why we call it faith. That's why we call it belief. If you knew for a fact God existed, our lives would change. If we knew for a 100% fact that God existed, the world would become absolute chaos. You think it's bad now? <laughs> the amount of war and death and murder and... Oh, it would be unbelievable. Because all of a sudden the laws of man would evaporate. Gone. It's all about God. But then you have man who is very, very fallible. And we would still, even knowing that God existed, we would still fight, say, no, I saw him, I know he exists, but he said this. So this is what we have to do. Another person could say, well, I heard him say this, so I'm not going to do what you said, I'm going to do this. And they're both saying, no, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. And boom, war. More and more war, more and more fighting until it's just devolved into hell on earth. And eventually it's going to get to a point where all the people who saw God are gone. And there's nothing left except stories. Does that sound kind of familiar? A little bit? Hmm. So God did send his son down. He did prove he exists. And it sparked massive war. Because we, 
we're not evolved enough. We're not, we're not there yet. We're not r ready to know that he exists. We're just not. And the Bible and history put them together. That's, that's your proof. We like this happened in like, we named, we got our timeline from it from when he was born to when he died at 32 or 33. Can't remember his age. Yes, you know, I have quit cigs. Just the pipe. It's helping me with the nicotine craving and I'm not in, I still inhale some, but not much. So it's getting better. Hey, Jojo. 33, yeah. But yeah, so it was known, but only known to a small part of the world. Not everybody saw it. So then it spread from there, but it was at first met with hostility, then it was accepted. And now it's basically met with hostility again. So maybe, maybe God will try again. Maybe not. Maybe he's like, okay, I've shown you. You do with this information what you will, and the chips will fall where they may. I don't know. I'm not God. I have no idea what he's thinking. But I will tell you some things that I do know. When I was in my early 20s, I was selling insurance and I remember very little of people. I remember a couple of nasty people, but the one person I remember the most was this old man. And well, he was not going to be buying more insurance, but he wanted to talk with me and we ended up talking about God and faith and and all that. And I still remember how good it felt to talk with someone who was truly a believer, not just as a technicality or covering your ass in case there's a rapture, but who actually believed, who's actually religious, who actually read the Bible and actually prayed and actually felt Jesus in his heart. I felt so good after leaving that house. I didn't make any money. In fact, I lost money because I, you know, lost the gas to go and visit him, but it was definitely worth it. And there aren't many people like that. Like my dad's like that. My dad is a very, very peaceful man. He's like me, except no, no badness. <laughs> He's a very, very good man. I could never be the man that he is. I'm no way I couldn't, but I don't know many people who are like that. I know a lot of people who say they believe and not a lot of people who do believe, but, and like me, I'm like this, I believe. But is it the center of my existence? No. How often do I think about God in a day? I do. I do think about God every day. But I, how often? Like, how much more often do I think about money? Or share? Or work? Or, you know, whatever. I definitely don't think about God more than other things. But yeah, I don't, I don't know where I was going with that. I just, <laughs> I just went off and I have no idea where my point was. All right. Now, you too often and you talk to him. That's good. And you should talk to God. 
There's definitely nothing wrong with it. Oh, we have miracles in our life all the time. The fact that we're alive is a miracle. Like, the, the amount of things that have to line up so perfectly for us to exist on Earth is staggering. They have to be so precise. So perfect. Just for us to be able to live. Never mind everything else. Just for the sun to be where it is, for the earth to be where it is, for gravity to be the exact strength it is, like for everything has to be, everything in physics has to be exactly what it is. If it's off even a tiny bit, life cannot exist at all. So it is definitely a design. I, I can't see it not being, I can't see it being random. I just can't. So that's one of the main reasons I believe in God as an adult. I believed in God when I was a kid because I was told to. I was told he exists. I was told, yeah, there was just no, there was no other way. No one ever said God might not exist when I was a kid, ever. It was just taught. And I, in a way, I agree with that. In a way, I don't. I think people should decide for themselves when they're able. But there's a problem in the world today that really bothers me. And that is the lack of God. Most people, like most children, how often do they hear about God, do you think, in a day, a week, a month? Other than hearing someone say the word, like, God and the curse, or for God's sake, or oh my God. But how often do you think children are actually spoken to about God in a month? I would say zero times. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe I'm wrong in drawing that, a connection between that and the lack of moral society has today and how lost we are as a society today. Maybe as maybe one has nothing to do with the other, but I personally think it does. Cause I know what I was like when I was a kid. I know how I treated other people when I was a kid because it it was as a kid, it was because I knew that if I didn't treat people well, if I was disrespectful to an adult or a teacher or even another kid and my parents found out about it, I got whooped. I, I did it out of fear at first, but now I treat people well because I want to treat them well. It's not, I don't treat people well in the hopes they'll treat me well. I don't treat them well because I'm going to get something back that way. I treat people well because I want to treat them well. And if I wasn't raised that way, if it wasn't put into my head, you should do this or there will be consequences. If I wasn't raised treating people well in fear of punishment, would I have come out wanting to treat people well just for the sake of wanting to? Maybe not. I, and I honestly, I don't think I would be the man I am today if I wasn't raised like that. I think I would be a very vicious man because I do have that in me. 
like I will say, I mean, you all see a very nice composed man, but I will say there is a monster in me. And if he awakens, it's fucking brutal. I have really, really hurt people in my life, like beyond what should have happened for sure. I definitely have that in me, but it's not prominent. It's not something I can't contain because I want to treat people well. I want to make people smile and laugh and feel good. I enjoy that. It's not because they're going to do the same for me. They will most times out of, you know, respect or the, uh, urge to reciprocate or whatever, do unto others as they do unto you. So, yeah, but it's just because I want to, it's not to gain points or to look good in someone else's eyes. I treat people well because I want to treat people well. But I don't think I would be there if I wasn't taught about God and about obeying the rules and about everything that the Bible teaches. I wouldn't be the man I am. Maybe that monster would be more prominent than the nice guy. I don't know. I think it's very possible because there are definitely monsters in the world today. And I do wonder, looking at these people, would they have be the monster they are if they had my childhood. I wonder. I really do. So all that is to say that since we have become so lost as far as our pursuit of faith and our pursuit of a relationship with God, it doesn't have to be God as far as I'm concerned. This is where I'll divert from a lot of people. It could be whatever deity you want. It could be Buddha. It could be Allah. It's about a moral standard. Almost every religion out there has the same code of ethics. And basically, it's just be good. There are varying levels. And some of it goes too far, I will say that. I mean, that's a whole other thing. I'm not going to get into a debate about how religion has actually been the death of faith, but it has. A lifestyle without God is like a Mad Max on an ego-driven system. Exactly. It's, yeah, no wonder we have people murdering, torturing, raping, because they, they don't have God. They were never taught about it. And it's like, you can't go to a grown up who has never, well, you can, but going to a grown up who has never even considered going to a church or talking to a priest or reading about God doesn't have to be the Bible. It could be anything. Just reading about what other people say about their faith or anything like that. Anything religious at all. A lot of that is just, you're going to come into a person, they're just going to be like, well, I, I don't want to hear any of that. I'm a good person. I'm fine. I'm good. But are you? I don't know, I, I can't see in your soul, but like if you aren't believing in God, why are you good? Why are you doing the right thing whenever you can? Is it just out of fear of being punished by the law? Is it because you are generally a good person? I mean, I don't know. But yeah, I do think that, well, I will say that I don't like that God or religion, I'll say this, 
not God. I, w I don't like that religion was taking out of schools. Now, when I was a kid, we had a religion class. I think it was probably once a week, an hour once a week, something like that. It wasn't a lot. But now that that's gone, we aren't being taught anything about God. Kids aren't taught anything about God when they're growing up in schools. Maybe their parents were. But then those kids grew up and had kids. And so they didn't grow up being taught in school about God. So their kids knew nothing about the fact that God was once taught, or I would say God, religion was once taught in school. So what's, what's happening now that those people have grown up and are having kids? See how we're getting more and more and more disconnected from religion, from our faith, because it wasn't, because it was taken out of schools? Yes, you know, I remember, I remember vividly saying the Lord's Prayer and singing the Canadian National Anthem every morning. Also, <laughs> this may not have been in your school, but this was in mine. Also, every morning, we were, pa uh, the teachers passed around this uh, mouthwash. We all rinsed our mouths. What is going on with my camera? Went blurry. We all uh, had to rinse for 30 seconds. <laughs> Promoting dental health. I don't know if that's still going on in schools. I doubt it because it. I only remember that when I was very, very young. But I think that was a great idea. I don't know why that stopped. Promoting spiritual health, promoting dental health. What is wrong with that? Now, it's because, supposedly it's because, I, this isn't the real reason, I don't think, but supposedly the reason religion was taken out of schools is because Christianity isn't the only religion. And obviously it's not. But let's say you have a classroom full of a hundred students, 80 of them, like this is, this would be back when, uh, religion was actually prominent in our moral character. 80 of them would have been uh, Christian majority of those Catholic, but that's another thing, at least 80. Probably 15 would be Jewish. And you would have a couple of Buddhists, maybe Muslim. Like it would have been a lot less, obviously, in this portion of the world. Just like if you went over to the Middle East, Catholicism, or like that would not be the prominent religion, obviously, in some of those places. In some places, it probably still is. Like, don't forget, Christianity was born in Africa. That's where Christianity came from. It spread from there. It didn't, Jesus wasn't white. It didn't start in England. No, that's, that's just where, like, history likes to pick it up from. And that's not the case at all. Anyway. So if I could go back and I could have a voice in all of this, take religion out of schools, I would have said, put more religion in schools. There are people coming in who have different beliefs. Why not celebrate it? If someone comes in and they're Buddhist, why not learn about Buddha? Why not teach people about Buddha? Acknowledge that some people, that is, a, that is where a major flaw in religion is. Yes, we believe that 
well, I was raised Catholic, but we were, we believe that Jesus existed. We believe he died on the cross, all that. I believe that. Do I know it to be true? No. Does it cause me to be the man that I am? Yes. But that doesn't mean that there aren't people who worship uh, Buddha or Manon or any one of a thousand other deities aren't far better human beings than I am. They don't, they, they do more for their neighbors. They, they give to chair, give more to charity. They pray more. They're nicer. They're better, uh, human beings, more productive. Like, do I know that I'm right over them? No, I don't. I have my faith and I can't, envision a God in any religion that would deny someone uh, a peaceful afterlife if they called him, called this being by the wrong name or derailed from their teachings a little bit. I, I can't see a God that would do that. I just can't. I could be wrong, but that's how I'm going to live my life. But anyway, going back to that, I would say, instead of just saying, this is the right one and you're wrong, and then eventually you have enough people that say, well, there's a lot of us now. We don't, we don't follow this. So they raise the stake. Okay, we'll just take it all out. Fine. That was a huge, huge mistake. At the very least... At the very least, if you won't teach religion in schools, you should teach morals or ethics right from kindergarten. What is wrong with that? But no, they won't. Instead, they'll have uh, gender studies and all this other stuff. which could not be a bigger waste of a young person's mind. Because what you identify as, what you feel like on the inside, how you see yourself has zero to do with me. I will respect you as a human being because I have morals. I will not berate you. I will not deny you your right to live a comfortable and happy life. In fact, if I can, I will help you. But why shove it down people's throats? Teach them to accept others. That's it. Be what you want to be. Do what you want to do. But you can't force people to follow your way of thinking that's not right you took uh, religion out of schools for that exact reason and now you're just backtracking it putting this other stuff in See, it's like the exact opposite something is very very wrong there and now i have a whole whack of feelings about all of that and a lot of them are not great, but um, this is not the stream for that. This is about Easter and rebirth and starting anew. And this is like an opportunity for everybody, even those of us who are terrible Christians, because I am, I, I couldn't on honestly tell you when Lent is, I don't know. I obviously didn't give up anything for Lent. I know it's before this, before Easter, but I don't know when. I didn't give anything up for Lent. I didn't even know Easter was coming this soon. I don't ever remember it being in March. But, you know, this is neither here nor there. Like, I'm not a knowledgeable Catholic. I, I can 
very confidently say that. But I'm going to change that. I'm going to learn more. I'm going to read the Bible, all of it. Because I'm curious about it, because I want to. And I really hope that one of it, one of somebody watching, maybe one of you, maybe one of you that's going to be watching after this, I hope one person feels what I'm feeling, gets that curiosity bug and wants to learn more. That's what I hope. I need a guide to help me, maybe. I don't know. Cher says, I need a shaman. <laughs> it doesn't happen often that you get Easter in March, that's for sure. It's, I'm sure it has happened in my life. I just don't remember it. Or I don't remember, like, actually being aware of it. Because for... Hmm. Why is Easter in March this year? The date for Easter varies each year depending on the Gregorian calendar. Easter typically occurs between March 22nd and April 25th, falling on the first Sunday after the first full moon following the spring equinox. Okay. So, yeah, I knew it wasn't a set date, but I never actually knew. I didn't know that either until this year. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, why is it so early this year? Mark, can you pray for me to find a job? I've been unemployed for five months. 100% Harry Grace. And the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, one of yours is struggling. They're looking to find a job. This is a good man. I have known Harry for a long time. And I know he is a good person. Please give him direction, Lord. Please allow him to find that which he pursues. And please watch over him. And watch over us all. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't know that. Happy to do that, Harry. Hope it helps. David, you're a good man, too. You guys are all good people. Everyone, yeah. So many of you have been with me for a long time, and you've put up with my bullshit for a long... Like, what have I done on my channel in the last two years? Like, hardly anything, and yet you're still here, which is amazing to me. Because <laughs> there's no, no reason for you to be here other than the fact that you actually care like or care about me. I like that better than like me. You actually care about me. It's obvious. You wouldn't be here if you didn't because I'm not, I haven't been doing anything on this channel of any educational value as far as true crime goes. So, yeah. Hmm. I love you too, Harry. And I would. I'd be more than happy to pray for any one of you. Absolutely. If anyone would like me to say a prayer for them, I will do so right now. All you got to do is ask. And also, I do have the King James Holy Bible here. If you would like me to read a passage from the Bible that you like, it doesn't have to be about Easter. At this point, we've kind of gone all over the place. You know, if there's a certain passage you want me to read, just put it in there and I shall. Where are you going, baby? I didn't know if you were on the sump. I was in your search truck. Okay, where are we going, baby? Somewhere. Okay. I can wait. Well, it's quite a while, so. Mm. Well, apparently, my lovely wife wants us to go somewhere, probably to. No, I'm not. I'm not no, no rush, but we're going to be 
We'll run a couple of errands, probably going to Walmart. That seems to be our thing. <laughs> I'm out of Pepsi. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah, we are out of Pepsi. We are pop fiends in this house. We love that caramel colored sugar water around here. Yeah. It's so terrible. For it you. keeps oh me God. going. But it's delicious. It's worth things. Oh, Shan Camp wants me to read Matthew 6 22. You know, I learned some bad stuff from the Bible when I was a kid. Oh, there's bad stuff in there for sure. I learned naughty stuff from <laughs> the Bible when I was a kid. Let's see. Chapter 6. <clears throat> 6 22. This is in the teachings on treasures in heaven. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Oh, read the next one. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. Hmm. Yeah, mm. you know it. I like that. A lot of this stuff you could really contemplate mm. every passage. Here's a good YouTube one right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Judging and being judged, yeah. Oh. The third eye, love it. John chapter... 14. Mark Luke John. It's just on John. Fourteen six. Okay. John chapter fourteen verse six. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That is a big one. Yeah, you can't get to the Father without going by the Son. Now that's powerful and it's meaningful. Oh, here comes Chubbs to... No, you're not going to step on the Bible, buddy. But this is where there's... Uh, Things like that can spark that whole I'm right, you're wrong thing. Because a lot of religions don't uh, follow Jesus. So does that mean they're condemned to hell? I don't think so. I really don't think so. Like. But Jesus, I, th I think that Jesus isn't referring to himself as a being but more of a state of mind because jesus is is represented because you got the old testament which is very punishing and cruel like you will do this or you will lose you will suffer greatly but then jesus comes and he's love he's light he's peace he is the He is the rest for the weary. So when it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me, I don't think he I don't think it's meant literally. I think it's meant come by me as in by my teachings. And Jesus' teachings are peace, love, light. Do unto others. Turn the other cheek. All that. But that's just my take. I'm not saying I'm right. That's just what I get from it. Okay. Harry requested John 3, verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. 
That has been debated a lot. The talk of, uh, does someone need to be baptized? If a child isn't baptized and they die, do they go to hell? That, honestly, back in the day, there was a lot of people that believed that. That if you're if your baby wasn't baptized and died, that they didn't get to go to heaven. They would spend eternity in darkness. Now, honestly, I think that's... See, that's why I don't believe every word of the Bible. I don't believe that that's true. But the water and the Spirit, I mean, it's... It doesn't say... That you have to, has to be done by a priest in a church. Doesn't say the method. So I definitely think that it, it is open to interpretation. But definitely, and that's another thing that really makes me think about when you get into specific religions, like if a child, they, they don't have the option to choose what they're taught. Like up to, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old, they're basically taught what their parents want to teach. May the bunny be with you. <laughs> Chocolate. <laughs> so, if that's the case, you get a 10 year old boy who's never taught about God, never baptized, and he dies. Does he go to hell? No. What God would do that? But, according to the Bible, if you take it literally, he would. And a lot of priests, I've heard, physically heard priests say things like that. Because this was back when religion was freely talked about, freely taught and people were aware. So, and that's, that's a problem when a, an actual priest will say that. So, everything can be interpreted in, everything can be interpreted, everything can be interpreted different ways, obviously. But yeah, Bobby kisses, or baby kisses, sorry. You're right. It was a Catholic priest who said that. Uh-huh. And I don't think that's right. Do I denounce Catholicism because of that? No. And priest is just a man. A bishop is just a man. The Pope is just a man. Man is fallible. They can start me on the path, but it's up to me to go where I'm led. They, they just put me on the road. But yeah, that is absolutely wrong. And anybody who believe that, you are lost. Also, if that was true, and there is a God that's willing to punish a child for eternity because they didn't get the opportunity to learn about him. I don't want to see that God. That God is wrong. I don't want that God. I'd rather go to the hell. Because that God doesn't give a shit about us. If the whole point is to just worship, worship me. And if you didn't get a chance to find out, me, too bad. Don't care. You're gone. You're just going to give me accolades or I'm going to stomp you out. 
If that's, if that's God, I don't want it. Age of accountability is 12. Yeah, but in, that gets complicated. In today's day and age, I don't know, Mr. Shaman. You are, dude. <laughs> it gets so complicated in today's day and age because, like I said earlier, how often is God spoken of, like legitimately spoken of, to a child? Where where can they find it? Where can they find religion? I mean, they might see a church when they're driving around, but chances are their face is buried in their phone. That's not their fault. That's how they're raised. It's the fault of the parents. It's the fault of the school. It's the fault of the educators. Fault of, well, a big fault of the godparents, if you have any. It should start at home, yeah. Harry, for me, Brother Mark, I take the Bible literally. The Bible stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. It does. You're absolutely right. And I can't fault you for taking it literally. I don't judge you. I don't think I'm right and you're wrong. I don't know. I don't take the Bible literally. A lot of it I do. Mm. A lot. Not all. You raise your kids no TV or internet, they are doing the same. There you go, baby kisses. And some people nowadays, a lot of people would argue that that's um, neglect or abuse to a child. To not sit them in front of a screen all day. <laughs> how, how backwards is that? To not sit them in front of a screen all day is considered by a lot abusive. It should be the opposite. <laughs> to not sit down and teach your child and play with your child and do things with your child. To not do that should be abusive. I'm not going to you judge me right now. Go ahead. Judge away. <laughs> oh, Rebecca wants to hear Peter. You know what's bad is I don't know where Peter is in the Bible. I'll find it, but I don't know where it is. Can you help me? Where's Peter? <laughs> oh, it's way later. I learned something new.
Ah, the first epistle general of Peter. There we go. I found it. <laughs> Thank God for a table of constant contents. Okay. Oh, the second Peter. There's two. See? I'm learning already. <laughs> so sad. Yes, I'm Catholic. I'm just a horrible one. <laughs> okay. Second Peter 316. <clears throat> okay, this is in love indeed and in truth. 316. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our, for the brethren. I like that. God died for us. We should die for ours. I would. Well, I would certainly die for sure for the girls. Absolutely. It wouldn't even be a question. If anything comes to harm them, I'm going to stand in the way for sure. Did you start my truck, honey? Oh. All right. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to call that it for, for this one. And I'm going to get going, but... Uh... <laughs> Anonymous. I love you, dude. <laughs> Annabelle Roma, happy Easter. Everybody, if you've come in when I didn't see you, uh, happy Easter all. This has been fun, and there's going to be more coming. I am going to do more streams. And yeah, we'll just see where this channel goes. I don't know. But yeah, this is a good one. Thanks for hanging, guys. I'm going to go to Walmart. And we love you very much. And catch you on the next one. And until then, this is apparently True Crime Productions with Prayer Boy 77, aka Prayer Boy 77, aka Mr. Share, aka The Beard of Reason, aka The Voice of Reason, saying good day, good night, and Godspeed and happy Easter. Bye, everybody. I love you. <laughs>